Again, the humidity uh, kind of slowing it down, but I'll keep burning for a few minutes and if you get some more tender, get some more bark, get some more twigs and throw it on there. Keep going. And uh, by the way, this is what the bark looks like before you shred it. you got to shred it or else it... Oh, thanks. It really doesn't work at all. It's still going. <coughs> They always want to see that part. Number so remember one. Remember, when you're using kindling, start with very small stuff and slowly work your way up to the larger stuff. You don't want to smother your fire all at once. Well. Wow. This size, you don't want to add it really until the fire starts to flame and stuff this. You got a good flame going. Mason, not that much. Mason, then a bow, and then uh, arrow uses a bow, so they have more uh, force at impact due to their weight. The way they work is you put them on this thing. This is the actual atlatl itself, the spear thrower. It's got a hook on one end. You put the hook in a little hole, and you throw it like this. It acts by using principles of leverage and centrifugal force to increase the speed of the actual throw. So you can throw these much harder, much faster with this implement than you can just by using your hand. And we'll test this out here. I'll have some of you guys throw it by hand, some throw it with this, and see if you can get it the farthest or deepest into the feature. One of the unique features of these weapons was the fact that they had removable tips, like harpoons. So if it's stuck in an animal, this part might fall away, and you can pick this back up and use it again. Or another one in there. Now, these are just field points. If you're actually going to do hunting with these, and you don't have to use stone, if you're in a real survival situation, use whatever you have. Here, I got a nail. I found a nail. I heated it in a fire, pounded it flat, and used a file to sharpen it and put some barbs onto it. So, if you're really going to go hunting with these, you put something like that in there. This would be very, very effective. I, um, we were, we went up to this like rock thing, and we made like our own arrowheads and everything. Mm -hmm. Well. Somebody had brought like his own Adelaide thing, and one of the Adelaide heads thing broke, and he gave me it, so I have my one at home. Cool. Yeah, that's the other problem with using stone is that they're gonna tend to break. If this hits a rock, if you miss, if it hits a rock, it's gonna break your tip. Now, there's a bonus to that breakage feature. If it goes into an animal and hits a bone, it's gonna shatter and make dozens of sharp, very razor sharp fragments, which are going to increase the damage that's being done. So. That's a bonus feature, but the problem is, again, if you miss, especially if you're starting out, they're going to break. So that's why I've got iron tips on all these, because I know everyone's going to miss a little bit. <laughs> okay, that pretty much covers uh, the primary edible plants, a little bit about the animal nutrition. I want to talk real briefly about poisonous plants before we actually go head out there and look at them. I have one question. Yes. Your, the, the stick part, the wood part, what is that? This actual shaft yes, the shaft. is a kind of reed. You can use river cane too. River cane is a native reed. But there's different, several different kinds. They all kind of look the same, kind of work the same. Um, they grow along Cibolo Creek right down here. If you go a little bit downstream, you'll find some. You'll find a lot of it in San Antonio along the uh, San Antonio River. Um, but it's really important to use this and not a like a stick from a tree because this is flexible. Mm -hmm. Now let me show you why. When you go to throw this, and you flip over your hand like this, like you're throwing a baseball, that's gonna make the end go down like this. Now, if the end goes down, the spear's gonna have a tendency to shoot up. But, if it's moving forward, the inertia at the heavy tip is gonna keep it pointing in the right direction, and when you flip it down, instead of this shooting up like this, the tip's gonna stay pointing forward, but it's gonna bend. And it's gonna keep the tip pointing forward, and it's gonna oscillate, it's gonna flex in the air, and that'll keep it going towards the target. It's real important that you can find one that has this uh, flexibility. The reason you put the tip on a four shaft and not directly attached to the bamboo, because the bamboo is extremely fragile, I mean the reed, and if you just put a tip right in there, when it hits something, it's going to split and it's not going to have as much force as it would otherwise. The arrows help to keep it flying straight. If it goes a little bit to the left, it'll <coughs> make resistance correct, put it back on a straight path. There's also a slight twist to them. These are opposite sides of feathers, and it will cause the arrow to rotate and give it more stability. 
Okay, poisonous plants. Uh, I don't have too many here with us. Hopefully we'll be able to find some today. I figured uh, David probably had a lot of plants we could look at here on the property. So, you ever see something like this? A little red bean. Yeah. Ever played with them as kids? <laughs> These beans are super poisonous. One bean is enough to kill one or more adult grown humans. This is from a tree called Mount Laurel, scientific mm -hmm. name Sophora secundiflora. It's in the pea family. Many of the plants in this tea family are going to have toxic alkaloids. This one has one called cytosine that will depress your nervous system. It, it, it uh, intercepts between the neurons, blocks the signals, and causes your lungs to stop functioning. It shuts down your respiratory system. Extremely dangerous plant. Another one you'll probably see. There's a range of different kinds of toxins in plants, ranging from very mild ones that will just upset your stomach to ones that will kill you within a few minutes, like the castor bean tree, which has the chemical rice in it, one of the most poisonous plants we have here in South Texas. This one is actually a little bit differently. It's not a neurotoxin. This one causes hypoglycemia and massive liver failure. It's a scientific name, the genus Xanthium, common name cockle bird. It's a little bird that can stick to your clothing. But if you can learn to identify poisonous ones as well, um, It'll help you to avoid unnecessary accidental poisonings. Many people in Texas have uh, gotten sick. There are <coughs> small children who have died from eating plants that look like wild carrots, but were not in fact wild carrots. And hopefully we'll be able to find the poison hemlock plant down along the river here so you can see what the two look like, differentiate between them. Okay, I guess that brings an end to the formal part of this. And everything else is going to be hands-on, uh, full interaction. You have to make your own fires, throw the spears, find edible plants, eat the stuff if you want. Yes. Are you able to break down that uh, first aid kit? Oh, yeah. yeah. Let me go and show you all what I've got in my time here. Now, I just threw all this stuff together in here this morning. If I had to bug out, get out of town in a survival situation, this small amount of stuff would really give me an edge to survival. It's called a force multiplier. Okay, what have I got in here? Got a whole range of needles. This is only one dollar at Walmart. Oh, needles break easily. Very you smart. All kinds very of things. smart. Um, sewing your clothing, fixing your clothing. If you're constantly on the move, your clothing really takes a lot of wear. And I know this because doing wilderness survival trips, like in Idaho and Mexico, I was constantly having to fix my clothing. My shoes would get really wet and crack, and I had to sew my shoes back. One time, I cut my finger with my knife and slipped and cut the skin all the way through. You can see the tendon moving back and forth. So I used the needle to sew my to sew my thumb back up. Put six stitches in it. Um, if you just have a small bag like this, you won't have room for a lot of food, but I've got something with a lot of calories, a cliff bar. <laughs> but anything with a lot of high calories, you can add to your a small bag. I know Snickers are really, really bad for you, but they'll give you a little boost of energy to keep you going. Just until you can find a better source of food. I've got a dissection kit in here. Uh -huh. For uh, emergency operations. All right. You want to uh, make sure you know what you're doing before you start cutting on people, though. <laughs> Let me see. Uh, it. You... Now, it's really going to help you. If you're doing a lot of processing of animals, you learn a lot about anatomy. You learn where um, arteries are located, where the heart's located, and all that. Probably not for major surgery, though, but just like if you need to remove fish hooks, splinters, that type of thing. A few scissors, um, some sharp um, tweezers, forceps and surgeon scalpel. Where'd you get that at? Uh, a place called NASCO. It's a science supply company for the uh, public schools and private schools. NASCO. It's really cheap. By the, way, the thing is, if you ever do have to do something like that, make sure your tools are extremely sterilized, either by fire or alcohol or something like that. One of the biggest killers, like I said before, in pre-industrial cultures was small wounds, infection of small wounds, <laughs> tetanus or other soil-borne What's the trap for? Organism. Trap. A simple rat trap can be very effective. It doesn't take much calories. You just set your trap, you leave it, and come back. Maybe you'll have a big pack rat or a squirrel or something. Rat, uh, traps are one of the great survival techniques because you don't have to spend a lot of energy to make or to, to use them. String. String. Enormously useful. Well, so I've got some string over here made from the yucca plant, but it takes a while to do. So I've got a good length of string here, strong twine. This is trot line. I forget what the weight of it is, but it's a really strong, strong line for very large catfish. You can use it for a wide range of things, for making lashings to make structures, um, uh, for setting trot lines, for making trap snares, all kinds of things. Very useful. 
Uh, here I've got some iodine tablets to purify water. You put in two iodine tablets per liter of water and two of these neutralizers that'll take out the iodine flavor and color. You don't want to use these on a long term.